Now, it might be famous for its bridge, but a local lad wants to put Runcorn on the map for a very different reason. Andy Baker, who got hooked on WWE wrestling as a kid, had a dream to open an American-style wrestling academy here in his hometown. But would anyone come, he wondered? You bet they would. Take a look at this. It's fight night at the Runcorn Wrestling Academy, a time for grown men wearing spandex to get down to some serious rough and tumble. The academy, which meets in a community centre, was set up three years ago by Andy Baker, a local lad who trained to wrestle in America. When we first began, we had about six people. And now, obviously, we've got a kids' class going and an adult class. And we've got about 15 to 20 kids, plus about 20, 25 adults. So it has grown in the space of three years. It's a great self-discipline, I suppose. It's like karate or judo. Um, and it, it gets them in shape. It builds the confidence. The amount of confidence you see kids coming in, they don't have no confidence at all when they first start training. And when we have the kids' shows, you just see that confidence beaming out of them, and it's just great to see that. It's all about entertainment, and with the help of a drama coach, the wrestlers have each devised their own characters. Everyone's got an element of themselves in their character, and that shines through, and you can see that. But most of all, they've, they've had fun creating these these absolutely huge characters and different from themselves and it just just gives them a little bit of escapism from the normal everyday life and more so the the local community loves it and they come down every six weeks to see the show promo videos like these are an integral part of the theatrics around the wrestling they're directed by dan munro who decides the outcome of the bouts and makes sure they're as entertaining as possible it takes a lot of dedication and a lot of trust and a lot of cooperation and, um, and respect for each other in the ring to come up with such entertaining and athletic and painful matches but still with a goal in mind that you can say for instance I can decide who's going to win and that would help me sell, sell um, the next show because I can decide what's the best outcome so to speak in the way that maybe a soap opera or, or a modern drama would. Currently, the drama centres around the rivalry between two of the Academy's best wrestlers, the current reigning champion, Greg the Hatchet Hammond, and party time, Angel D'Souza. Uh, current heavyweight champion who have been for, uh, I think it's nine months now. Um, it's fantastic. I faced a whole range of people, uh, beat them you know, quite convincingly because I am a lot better than most people. I don't like being booed. I don't think anybody likes being booed, you know. I just do my job as best as I can. If they want to boo me, I'll boo them. I'll have a go at them. They will cheer for me eventually. They'll realise the talent that I've got and they will cheer for me. To be honest, I, I like to think that if I'm entertaining 200 people, I think I'm giving something back to people. They pay their money. Uh, as, you know, to come and watch us and I think that's a privilege and when we go out there and do what we do we've got to give 110% to make sure that the people who come tonight or any night make sure that they're entertained and feel satisfied with what they've paid for and there's no greater feeling than that. But before the fights can begin the wrestlers have got a lot of stretchy stage wear to wriggle into. Personally I, I would rather go out and wrestle in tracksuit bottoms but you've got to <laughs> uphold a certain certain amount of professional appearance. It's pretty much a standard that wrestlers wear a certain type of clothing when they wrestle, and so you're expected to do so. But personally, I, I, I'm not overly keen on wearing spandex, but you know. <laughs> when you live in a town like the town that we live in, there's not much room for creativity. There's not much room for being a bit different and, and nobody saying anything about it. When the guys come in, they get their clothes on, they get their makeup on, their costumes on, they come out, they are different people, they're different uh, characters to themselves. But he's evil, sadistic, 
uh, screws people over. It's basically a really nasty guy. Behind that curtain before you come out, I'm so nervous. As soon as you get out there, it's like, just forget about that and you just, you just want to entertain the crowd and put on the best possible show you can. Brilliant, it brings everybody together all ages from small to old. And do you like seeing the men with the top off? Yes. <laughs> Lovely, especially the type. <laughs> the ones with the fringes on the line. <laughs> It may look violent, but each move's carefully choreographed so no one gets seriously hurt. for the night's main draw, where Hatchet Hammond defends his championship title against underdog challenger Angel D'Souza. It's a dirty fight, but to the delight of the crowd, Angel D'Souza clinches the title. It just means absolutely everything to me. So, um, like I said, I'm going to defend this belt you know, well, as often as I can, and hopefully, like I said, put on that quality match and entertain the people like I can do so. Well, I like to think of changed people's lives in the community and it's, it's really great to see that and it makes me proud for each and every person here. That's all from us this week. Join us next Wednesday at 7.30 on BBC One. Bye for now. Next week, behind the icon, Nico's final years in Manchester. And she ended up in a squalid bed sit. Yeah, it was quite shocking, yeah. I'm Riz Latif with your 90 second update. The experts say your money really is safe. That's the message if you're with the Halifax or Bank of Scotland. It comes as the global financial crisis has forced HBOS into merger talks with Lloyd's TSB. It would create a mega bank but end uncertainty over its future. There's more reason today to be worried about your job. Latest figures put unemployment at a 10 year high. Just over 1.7 million are out of work. It's a mother's nightmare feeding contaminated milk to your child. It happened in China, where more than 6,000 babies are ill. Three have died after chemicals got into the formula. This man wants to be Prime Minister. Nick Clegg thinks Labour is finished and that the Tories won't do any better. It was his big speech to the Lib Dems in Bournemouth today. A spectacular ending for the Paralympics. The British team finished second behind China, winning 42 gold medals. London is now the host city.
Hello, I'm Annabelle Tiffin. The latest from the Northwest. An older mother is being questioned on suspicion of neglecting her six children after they were rescued from a house fire. The BBC understands they were inside alone when the blaze broke out. Dangerous dogs are being kept in Merseyside and it's claimed some are being used as weapons. A BBC investigation has also found other animals banned under the Dangerous Dogs Act are being kept as pets. Tomorrow's weather, any early morning mist, will clear to leave a dry day with some brighter sunny spells and highs of 18. On the BBC now, sniffing out the criminals, meet the Sky Cops' four-legged friends here on BBC One, getting what they deserve from the customers. It's the restaurant on two. Life in cold blood meets the armoured giants on BBC Four. Or for commentary on the Champions League tie at Old Trafford, it's Radio 5 Live. Hello, I'm Nick Knowles. Join me this Saturday with...